What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and we just finished watching the Halo show episode three. And I think overall it was a relatively good experience. There are some great things, some dumb things, but for the Halo show standards, I think it wasn't that bad at all. So like always, as we do, we always like to start off with a non spoiler review by providing some good, some bad, our official grade for the episode. And then the second half of the video, we're going to be jumping into our own spoiler discussion where we kind of just joke around. We talk about different events of the show, kind of talk about things that we like to dislike throughout the entire experience. But before we jump into it, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So let's start off with our good. And when I think of my good, I think the best aspect has to be the writing of the characters. So far, this entire show has been shown off in this episode. I think Ackerson has been shown to be a good villain. He actually has a real purpose. Chief is always as emotional as always, but there is some sort of a intrigue about what the writing is telling us here. The fact that we are getting some sort of moments that are actually I'm, I feel like I'm interested in and I want to and want to see what happens next and gets me excited to find out what happens next. I feel like that's something that I have had not have had in the show yet. So I feel like they've done a pretty solid job, at least in this one episode, to get me intrigued about what could happen. And I already know what's going to happen, but at least see how they write it. And I think this show has been lacking this for such a long period of time at this point. So I'm kind of surprised that this episode hits it in stride. And I think that's kind of the best aspect of what this episode was providing for me, at least. But Haki, what was a good thing you saw for this episode? Yeah, I got to agree with you. The story writing and storytelling um, so far, uh, they've done very well this season. Um, this episode was kind of a build up episode. Um, so it still, you know, did have some some pretty good aspects, but it gave a lot of backstory to um, some characters and, and the relationship between characters, which was pretty cool as well. Um, and I'm sure, you know, Frank might mention this and, uh, you know, he mentions it every once in a while, but um, everyone looks good. Uh, you know, when, when they're in their armor and everything. So I just want to see more of that. But, you know, pretty good episode. Um, you know, we're just going to have to see what happens, uh, you know, in the future. Yeah, Angelica, what was something that you felt was good for this episode? Yeah, I think Aki nailed it. A build-up episode is a great way to describe it and kind of giving depth to some of the characters that Marsman said. I think that's where it really shined in this one, especially for Ackerson. Um, this was a kind of, a, you know, piecing together some of the um, relationships that they have between the characters and building up upon some of the themes that you saw in the first two episodes. Some of them I don't uh, fully agree with, which we'll get into the, like the not so good, but um, they have written it much better and it's much more enticing. And for the big thing on the show, guys, and maybe you guys agree with it, just less stupid stuff. Like it's just riddled with that in season one where it was like there's some nice moments but it's just drowned out by such stupidity and i felt like in this episode there was times that you could see it coming and it just wasn't as bad as we've seen in previous episodes and, and the previous season of just stupid pointless stuff so i think that's a good thing getting more focused yeah i see when i'm looking at the writers and directors there are four separate directors on this show as well as a i, know, roughly, I don't love them doing that yeah, that roughly around think. like a roughly around i'm just trying to count here six to seven writers yeah. on the show and you know episode three visigrad of, of the visigrad relay craig zisk and marcia mercury G is the two people that the director and then the writer i think they did a good job and i'm happy to see that craig zisk is actually doing the direction for the next episode because i felt like this was a lot more darker they they did something magical guys i'm not, I'm not sure if you picked up on this but chief had his helmet on and i can sense intensity in moments where he just had to turn yeah. his head and look at people and you could tell that he was angry right or he was determined and i feel like damn i i didn't know that that was possible guys you know mask lit, mask on and you actually could show emotion and i was like i was actually impressed with with even uh you know mr mask off uh you know pablo shriver you know I, hey you know that's exactly what chief would have done in that first scene well we we're going to talk a lot more about it but I feel like the intensity of the show, at least this episode, did, was was superb with how they gave you the feeling that intensity was happening, even though nothing nothing crazy happened yet. It's just really the feeling that you're about to get soon, right? I think that's really the best thing. And now let's talk about the bad. And, and when I think about the bad, the pacing between the good plot lines versus the Quan arc and bad plot lines is still bothering me. Quan is getting more screen time 
and is getting the Pirate's Life for Me plot, and, and I'm just getting tired of seeing it. And it legit slows down the show to a complete standstill. I'm annoyed because this episode was getting really good, and then all of a sudden you get hit with a quan arc, and then you, it just slows down. It's almost like it's just like, wow, we're hitting 60 miles an hour, and then stop. Yeah, stop at the red light, and then, all right, now we have to get pick up again. And it's just like you, you start feeling that, you feel drained watching this because you're like, I just want to see consistency. And you see all the chief arc stuff is getting good. Akerson stuff is really good. You know, build up with the covenant is good. And then you just get pirates like, all right, it's, you know, give me a yo, ho, ho. And look at that, you know how to do. And I mean, it's like, yo, I, I don't, I don't understand the reason for us to keep jumping into the mutiny of pirates. There's no reason for us to do this. Right, and I'm, I'm, I, it's just annoying. And I, I, maybe I sound like a Quan hater, but Quan is one of the most hated characters in this show easily. It's like if you vote, go online and put it on a vote. Who's the most hated character in all the Halo show at this moment? If it's not Maki, it's Quan. Right, that those are the two top two hated characters. And I'm not, I'm not BSing you when I say this. I feel drained when I see Quan's arc on screen. Right, it's just a bunch of characters, especially now Soren's not there. Like. What's the point of me watching this arc now? It's like Kessler. That's who I'm. Who's, that's who I'm supposed to be excited for. The kid. Like that's who I'm supposed to be happy to see. Like there's no one there that makes me enticed to watch that part. So, Quan arc just slows it down for me. It still bothers me to this day. Let's just get less of that. I think we'll be all right. But uh, Angelica, what is a bad thing you thought about this episode? Yeah, I know. I said part of the good was just less stupid stuff, and I do stand by that. I think there is less of it, but. Um, like you mentioned, I think this episode does lack action. Um, it's not a heavy action episode. And I get it, you're not going to get that each time. But I felt there were some missed opportunities that I will talk about in, in the spoiler section where they could have added some action, which I think would have pushed the main plot. And secondly, um, there's some really good moments, but the rubble stuff overshadows the Covenant screen time. Um, this is, again, where... you. You know, based on really what you love about the show, you know, for me, I want to see as much Spartan stuff and as much Covenant stuff as possible. And the other stuff to me should be very ancillary. Um, and so that still rears its ugly head, um, along with some of the themes that they go with Master Chief. Um, and it, which we, if you've seen the other two episodes, I'm not going to dive too deep in spoiler, but him as a soldier and him as a, um, you know, able to follow orders and his mental capacity. Uh, just at times feels rushed, and I know it might be a little controversial, but for me, it just feels they're taking components from old, the newer Halo games, um, and it's fine with the direction, of it, but for me, it just doesn't feel as impactful because I've played the Halo games. Yeah, and uh, Haki, what was the bad that you felt from this episode? Yeah, so the strong part is definitely, you know, the action. So, you know, Frank had just said it, it's kind of lacking a little bit of action. They, they missed a couple points where they could have thrown something in there, uh, but for the episode to be still pretty decent, that means the rating was good. But like you said, Mars, the the one uh, thing that I don't think they can save uh, is Quan, and in my opinion, Maki as well. Um, so those two are the the things that are slowing down the show, and it really is, uh, you know, Quan's story right now that that really kind of completely, you know, slowed this episode down. Plus a little bit of of action where they could have had it as well. It feels like they're saving money for a big big action scene that's going to yeah, happen next, next episode, episode. <laughs> we're just getting a lot of conversations we hear a lot of things happening but don't see them and it seems like hey we got to save some cash because we're about to drop some fat stacks in the uh, next couple episodes um, it, it seems like from the commercials and promos that's what it seems like and and with the bad let's jump now to our final verdict we're going to give our official grade for the episode and you know i'm like a, i'm a, maybe i gotta rag on myself a little bit i i think i gave too high of a grade for my first episode because i was thinking uh, wow actually they started off really well with a lot of action scenes and this one had less action scenes but i think this episode was actually better than the first episode so if i was gonna i mean i think i'll lower my episode one to an eight right i think i said an 8.5 i think for me and i'm gonna go against my words i'm gonna say this is a 7.8 mainly because of the fact that this is a good episode in my eyes the issue that i do have is that you're lacking you're still not understanding the basic premise of why Quan stinks so bad, right? It's like, it's constantly hearing like, boo, you stink from the audience. And then they just keep saying like, well, you like her now? Like, no, she has a different outfit on. 
she uses a knife. Like, no, I don't like her anymore. I still don't like her. Like, well, she she's with the kid. I don't like her. Like, it's just you constantly keep hammering the Quan arc. Like, oh, well, she's she pirates life for me. Like, you know, like, I don't care about that stuff. I just don't want to see Quan anymore. But we already know that Quan's going to be a pivotal character. They, you know, they, they, there's a lot of spoiler stuff I'll get into about Quan and why I despise Quan's character. Um, but it's just like, I just think the constant change of pace makes this episode slow down enough where it loses that the impact and i feel like that's the episode like ends on a really strong note compared to the previous two episodes which ended on horrifying notes this one ended on a really great note but there are just some components throughout the episodes that make you get annoyed that the pacing is off and if the pacing stuff was gone if there's not even a single ounce of quantum in this episode which you could have done without then the episode probably would have been like an 8.5 like this probably would have been a top tier episode but just think of it think of the worst aspects of this episode and you can always tie it to the quan parts like that's that's literally what bothers me and i feel like because of that reason a 7.8 is a pretty fair score uh but hockey what is your rating for this episode so i got this at a 7.5 so it is i believe still higher than uh all the other ones for me as well uh but yeah the action is the pivotal part of this uh you know of of this show so they have to bring action i know like langella kill said you can't have action every single second but you know seeing the spartans and uh you know seeing what they can do with the cgi that they have you know we saw in the last you know at least the last couple episodes they've gotten better with the story writing the cgi has gotten better the looks uh you know have gotten better in general so they have to stick with you know what the fans want and the fans like you said mars they don't want Quan. they I mean, I know they're not going to kill the story arc, but give us less of Quan, more of Master Chief in his Spartan outfit, um, you know, battling with the other uh, Spartans, and you really have a show that can really, you know, kill the game. Yeah, and uh, Angelic Hill, what's uh, your rating for this episode? I'm at a 7.5 as well. I actually think it is better than the first two overall. Um, and what's stopping it from being a great or a very good episode was that lack of action, um, in my opinion. Even in some of the themes that I don't agree with, um, the way they write it is enough to be tolerable um, when it comes to the Master Chief. Um, but it's the lack of action and replacing it with the rubble stuff. I don't want to put it all on Quan, but just the rubble arc itself just feels like magical or magical, whatever the hell it's called. Um, just like a slightly less wor- worse version of that. that. Um, but it's just still slows the pacing down. So to me, it's a 7.5. Yeah, and that's going to be it for our non-spoiler review, guys. But if you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. And let us know if there's anything that you're looking forward to with this episode, especially if you like the way that this episode have consisted of any of the story arcs so far you like about the show. Let us know what you think in the comments below. But now we're going to transition to our spoiler discussion. So we'll see you there. So here we are in the spoiler discussion of Halo show. And as I said in the review, I think this was actually a pretty damn good show or at least episode, at least for this first especially beginning and ending and how it kind of felt for me. I feel like that intense feeling that you get when the opening scene because now it, it last episode kind of ended with the the gross maki part but for chief story having him and silver team go to the visigrad relay was something that if you played the halo reach game you know the visigrad relay is where the covenant enter through first they take out the relay so then they can use that to jump into reach on well, undetected and so when you hear that line you're like all right Things about to go down. Last thing we heard was that Cobalt team was sent to Visigrad Relay. Chief was warning everyone about the Covenant will be there. And then all of a sudden we get there. And, and, and so then we get to the part where Chief is at this door. A lot, the whole time Kai was was like, hey, I'm not sure about this. And even the other Spartans were actually agreeing with Chief saying, hey, do you believe him now? I think I think he's right. And they get to the door where they hear the sound from and Oni shows up. Right. And they all kind of it's at gunpoint, like a Mexican standoff. And I think this was one of the coolest parts because, and I said this to, to Angel Kill off screen, I said, this is exactly what I wanted with Halo 5. I wanted to see like this, this whole concept of Chief going AWOL and like the confrontation that happens between Chief and Oni, just like the one we had with Halo 4 and Del Rio and Chief, like where it's like, I get to that tense moment where it's like, what is Chief going to do? Like, this is a pretty, like, this is a, a really ballsy thing that he has to make a decision on. And you could sense that where the Spartans were aiming their guns at Oni. They were only hearing the chief wanted to tell him. And, you know, it was it was everyone's aiming guns at each other. And he just 
no, I'm gonna, I'm going there, whether you like it or not. And he does, and nothing's there. And I feel like the, it was a good moment because it makes Chief like seem like he is losing it. But from the from the viewer point of view, we all know what we saw. We all saw Maki alive. We all saw Maki with the elite. So we all know that Maki's there. Chief isn't BSing us. But in the, from the from the people standpoint, they all think he's nuts. So I feel like that's where I can understand parts of why they're using this story plot with a like, chief being unbelievable like no one's believing him because of the fact that like we can see it but they can't and it's like we're also just now absorbing all like we are chief in a way where it's like we're like damn we saw this stuff we should be believing him and no one is believing him and it's like you're wondering when that's gonna happen um so i just wanted to get your feeling about that opening scene i felt like it was a good kind of a good start for this episode and it kind of set the tone for how the rest of the episode was going to be with, with the intensity. So, Haki, what was your overall feeling about that first part? Yeah, I think this was probably one of the best opening scenes or one of the best scenes in general of the show. Um, like I said, when they are in their suits, and Angelica always hits on this, when they are in their suits, talking even the dialogue as well, everything seems pretty perfect. They kind of nail all of that on the head. Um, but yeah, you can really feel the suspense. After seeing Master Chief, you know, Superman punch Halsey uh, last season, I thought he was going to do something crazy, just start kicking people, Superman kicking people and everything. I thought yeah, it was more him. realistic. It was more realistic this in this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, well, I was just saying, you know, after seeing yeah. him punch, you know, Halsey. But, yeah, that that's exactly what you would think would happen. So, I mean, the suspense was good. Um, again, I thought we were going to see a little, uh, you know, covenant action but it makes sense with the story that they're kind of portraying that you know chief has kind of gone insane um you know he's seeing things he's seeing maki he's seeing these elites um you know he never really fought them that, that's what people are thinking so uh suspense was good um i think one of the best opening scenes so far of, of every single halo episode we've seen angelica what was your overall feeling here yeah no i agree they looked great the dialogue was good the standoff was uh you know and and to me what hits on it, I hate, again, I'm not a, it has to be one-to-one -one with lore. I said this one, the first Halo season came out with Last of Us when we covered it, and I'll say it again on this one, it doesn't have to match 1v1, but I just wanted the characters to match as closely as possible, and this felt like a moment when he said, Chief, stand down, and Chief walked through the door anyway, right? He didn't, you know, scream and yell and, like, do reckless, like, unbelievably crazy things, but that's something I could see Master Chief doing. Right. And that's what kind of is like, OK, that was a strong moment there um, with the other Spartans and with Oni. And it's like, you know, no bolts were fired, but Chief looked like a badass um, and now nothing was there. So, you know, it, they're setting it up well. Again, I mentioned some of the themes in previous segment that I don't love because it's like you're you're making Chief out to be crazy and unreliable um, without showing the part where Chief was that for you. Right. We didn't get to see. It. We're just assuming that right in this show. But that's what they're writing, and the way they're writing it is showing it makes sense from the Oni standpoint that he's losing his mind and some of his other Spartans. And from Chief's standpoint, he knows that he's right. So the way they're writing it, it ended up doing pretty uh, good opening scene. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'll talk about another aspect of this, uh, and it, it, it kind of builds into later in the episode about you know Kai and, and Vanek and, and, and Riz are all like don't believe him, and they're all kind of like you lied to us and stuff. And I feel like that's kind of the only issue I felt about that connection is i understand kai being the one that's kind of like you you know you're you're i'm i defended you right and you're kind of now drifting to that way but i feel like that they also kind of all have to i wish they were closer where it's like they don't just automatically be like chief's nuts like all right peace out homie like we're, i feel like they're all they should have all kind of been like what's going on with them like what, what's happening we got to figure out what's happening with chief and at least then it kind of shows you the deep connection like from last episode they had that almost that stupid ass brawl between them and cobalt like hey what'd you say bitch like like that part and then them automatically just being like chief's nuts see ya i'm outie i'm gonna go hang out with uh you know the blind spartan and, and his and his you know and his husband you know like that like that part like like chief is like the the ultimate he's the commander of all <laughs> spartan twos right he is the straight up master chief of all the spartan twos the story is that he's the the best of the best of the spartan twos and he was the leader of it. And it feels like they're kind of missing that. Like, no, that's yeah, why I don't understand. I don't, like he's lost it. It's not even just like, I, I, I understand, it. like, I understand what they're going with, with the whole, like him losing it because they're like, it make him have visions. I just think that like, you, 
the whole point of them like using Spartan threes instead, but because then Spartan threes don't have that personal connection to the chief. They're all soldiers that be joined the Spartan program because of their active. They want to become part of the program to help save humanity or be part of the UNSC in that way. Like they don't have that love for chief in the way that the other Spartan twos do because they're all like basically siblings. They're all they grow up. They grew up together. So it's like. That's why when Cobalt team just says, hey, Riz, you're a bitch. And then she's like, what'd you say, pussy? Like, I, I don't understand that dynamic. And I don't understand why they're all ultimately just like, damn, Chief, you're just you're just nuts, bro. Like, I'll I'll take command. Like, like you know, what I mean, like that doesn't make sense to me in a way. And, and that's why I'm a little like confused and why they're jumping to that degree so fast. I think they could have made it more like Chief, man, like, you know, you're struggling. Like, like let's we're here for you. Like they should have made it more like a person like their siblings. And then Chief could have been like, I'm fine, right? And then, it, but like Chief's getting angry. He's yelling, I didn't say you could leave, Kai. Like, yeah, guy, no, like no. dog, like guys, like you're making this seem like, I get it, they're military personnel. But at the same time, they're also basically siblings. So like you can make it where like they care about him. He understands like, I'm not crazy. Like you need to believe me. And they're like, listen, we're trying, but it's hard to see that right now. Like, you know, uh, you, yeah. you can make it a little more like and, that. And the other chief moment, I said that was a chief moment. That one was not, that didn't like, feel like Don't walk away from me, guy. I yeah. just know you can't <laughs> leave yet. Like, salute to me when so, you leave. Like, yeah. I was just like, yeah, I'm like, you're you're just, uh, yeah, you're not just missing. <laughs> 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 salute to me first. Like, or, like it's just yeah, like, like right. it's just getting a little yeah. dust. But let's move on because I feel like I could, we're talk all day about that. But the, the I feel like the Ackerson, this is the best Ackerson that yes. we've seen so far. And. I know a lot of people, including us, have said, you know, I, I, I like Ackerson as a character. Um, he was the one that kind of starts the Spartan 3 program, his arrival with Dr. Halsey. We understand why that he hates Dr. Halsey more now. Um, but this episode really was an homage to uh, to Ackerson as a character and gave him a lot of backstory to give us a reason why he's doing what he's doing. Almost to the point where it's like he's not a villain. It's like he's he is in the right in a way but he's also doing things shady to benefit his cause and that's what makes villains good is when you have a feeling like what they're doing they think in their right mind is right right even though like they're, what they're doing is wrong but they're doing it in the way they, they think is the best for the situation and death. i feel like that's where, death, right yeah, like he yeah. has depth to him he's not shallow like he's not just a shallow villain like we, there are a lot of times where villains are shallow and they could be good but when a villain has depth, I think it brings more connection. Yeah, okay. it doesn't. It doesn't need to be like, uh, uh, you know, like the Joker. It's just he just yeah. he wants to watch the world burn. That's not. There's no reason, rhyme or reason, why he's doing it, right? Yeah. It's, and you know, but there's also characters that you know that when you hear and you understand their reasoning, you're like, they're they're still bad guys, but they're just. I understand what your mindset is, right? Like that's kind of what I saw with Ackerson, and it was really a lot of the scenes with his dad. That were pretty good, like really emotional scenes. Like his dad obviously has uh, has Alzheimer's or dementia, and, he, and he's basically like losing his memory. Um, and you know, he's giving some really good lines, like you know that bridge I built. Like, cause he he basically he was told the secrets that Ackerson knows that the Covenant are on reach, basically. And you know, that at some point, you know, they're gonna invade, and and the hell's gonna break loose. And he strip says, "I can't stop them. Like I've tried everything in my power, but." Yeah. It, uh, they're, they're gonna win and i think one of the most powerful scenes he says to him is uh don't let them take me alive right and i feel like that was a pretty screwed up scene and you knew that Ackerson had a little bit of backstory there but like the fact he talks about his mom died his sister is dead and then you know you get a little bit more in information about him but then from that we jump right to quant right it's like we get some really two great scenes and then we jump to quan with the pirates life for me and Basically, she is trying to uh, save Soren's wife and Kessler from the mutiny of pirates. And I feel like they don't really explain the reason why. It's just because, I, well, Soren's not here, so they're going to take over everything. Yeah, the they're gonna sell. Them all. Yeah, they're going to sell. They're going to sell you guys to the other pirate lord or whatever. And and it's just like it's just stupid. It just doesn't makes me doesn't it makes me it makes my balls itch. It makes me hurt. Like, I really don't find any enjoyment in this. So. I kind of want to get your input before I jump to the next parts. We have an Ackerson scene right to Quan. What's your overall feelings about these two back to back? And Angelica, I'll let you go first here. What was your overall feelings about both these parts? Yeah, uh, Ackerson one was great. I liked, I love the dialogue. 
I told you guys last episode, those that watched it, I felt like Ackerson, you know, they revved him up on like the villain scale up to 10, but it just, there wasn't a lot of depth to him and this episode gave him depth. And that was, I, to me, very appreciative. I like, I want to know more characters. I want to know more Spartan characters. I want to know more of these villain characters and I want to know more Covenant characters. And so this hit it for me with the Ackerson stuff and giving me a little insight on his motivations and his life. And then it jumps to Quan and the pirate life. And I hate doing it because it feels like Quan is like the bullet, you know, like the bullseye for the badness of this show. But it's just that like no one cares about the rubble and no one cares about the pirate's life. They don't care. The thing you watch this show for this sci-fi Halo show is you want to see Spartans. You want to see UNSC. You want to see War and you want to see Covenant. And unfortunately, she's leading that brigade of a pirate arc that we don't really care about. Yeah, Aki, what are your what's your feelings about these two parts here? Yeah, I think Ackerson's probably my favorite character right now. Um, he's written great. The actor is doing a, a great job yeah. kind of portraying, you know, what that Oni leader is supposed to do, kind of come in and clean up shop and, and try to, you know, save humanity pretty much. Um, but yeah, you can see the relationship between him and Halsey, I think, is a, a very um, important relationship as well. And, and you know, seeing what happened to his sister and, and seeing where he got to and, and seeing what he's able to do. Um, you can kind of see how much power he holds, which is, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, and everything with his, his father, especially the last scene, uh, you know, he kind of kept his promise there. Uh, but yeah, then you, you hop to Quan and it's just, um, it's just bad. The, the story arc. And again, we're all just kind of shitting on Quan here, but it's the truth. And like you said, Mars, yeah. you go online and other people agree too. It's, you know, it's just a bad writing job. Um, and she, you know, even in this episode, she did weird stuff. Like, you know, uh, Soren's wife told her, hey, listen, take my kid and get on the transport and don't leave my kid. And what does she do? She abandons the yeah. child. <laughs> well, we, to try to we, know, we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, oh, we're going to jump that's, in. That's yeah. next. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're going to jump into that one. You know, it, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here because I'm so upset. But, yeah, it's just... Um, it's a character that no one likes um, and just they're going to continue writing her and, and they should just try to minimize her, uh, you know, her being there. Yeah. It, it, listen, when you get the beginning, the first like third of the episode, it was the Akerson, the first opening scene, and then you get Quan, right? And so they slows it down and then you go back to chief scenes. And, and, and so this is where you see, oh, he gets reamed out. That's the whole famous, uh, you know, Cobalt change fl flight plans. They're not on Visegrad, they're on somewhere else. And then like in Captain Insano, and then the, everyone on Silver Team gets grounded. They can't leave, um, and then you know that's the whole "Don't walk away from me." I said not to. You're not dismissed yet, and stupid crap like that. And then right, right from there, right after that, we get he's is in the room with Ackerson with all the dead Cobalt team, <laughs> and we didn't even hear anything about what happened. See it for ourselves. We just see him dead. It's like the the equivalent of that was like the seeing keys and them in the room interrogation room and they're all sitting in the next next scene they're all sitting on chairs that was the equivalent for me because i was just like well what i like, literally like the suspense that we had about like wow what that's that's pretty messed up they grounded him the next scene be like oh chief was right the entire time there was not even a question that he wasn't wrong like he was literally right like they're dead and it's from plasma scar from the covenant like they literally got killed by the covenant and then Ackerson, and like that, I mean, they're, other than that dumb thing, the Keys and Ackerson dialogue was pretty good. Like, the Ackerson was like, listen, I like, I, I knew, but we also like, I'm, I'm trying to stop the hysteria. And the famous line, like, we got to call in the winter contingency. Like, that's literally like famous from the Halo game when Covenant first showed up and, re and Noble Team's like, we got winter contingency, guys. And they're all like, Man, and the best line in that game is, may God have mercy on us all. Cause they knew, like, it's game over. Like, we're just trying to save as many people as possible. And Keys is like, we got to we gotta initiate this now. And Ackerson's like, hey, you know, if we do that, then there's going to be death because of this, this straight up, like, craziness is going to happen. And so we need to, like, be smart with how we do this. And he's basically telling Keys, you should get out of here. I'll, like, we'll, like, set up a plan so that we can save as many people. But you need to be out of here. I need to be out of here. We need to get off this planet now. Yeah, and the major assets are leaving, and they're leaving a bunch of people to die. That's yeah. That's kind yeah. of what the hard yeah. decisions they say they have to make. Yep. And, and Keys says, uh, go blow it out your ass. And, <laughs> and <laughs> different, <I'm> saying, <laughs> different ways of saying it, but uh, go blow it out your ass and I'm staying and fighting. And, you know, Keys is like, you know, I think the guy, 
I know the first season people threw a lot of shade at Keys, and you know, but I'm like, listen, I don't think Keys is a good bad actor. I don't think he's doing a bad job as Keys right now. He's like, I yeah, thought it's he's just, poorly. I just he's think the first poorly. season they just did not do a good job with the whole like Keys knew, Halsey knew, everyone knew, and here are my drawings, and go take a look at my drawings and all that stupid crap that he did in the first season. But but Keys actually is doing a good job. Um, and like I said, you had good scenes. Wow, great job by Keys, gets me hyped. And then we got Quan, right? And then we get Quan again to get me just butt hurt. And this is where they all try a really dumb attempt. I don't know how they were able to pull this off, but they were able to walk, no hoods on their heads, walk in front of all these people that were pirates, who you would think the pirate queen would be very recognizable to a bunch of people, but they were able to just walk normally, like right onto the ship, open the hatch, get on there, and then try to fly away. And the door closes. And you're like, oh, oh my God, we're done. We're, we're screwed. All right, now my next plan is, just like Haki said, go take my son and get out of here. And I was like, oh, wow, she's about to get clapped. All right, that's, that's, that, that takes off one character we have to worry about out of here. Um, and then, you know, she gets captured by the pirates. And then we have a whole Pirates Life for Me intimidation song, which we'll talk about in the last part, because that's really the final third. But second, third, guys, the middle part, it was very slow. It was a very, very bland esque of this of this show of this episode um i think the the cheat the keys and actress and stuff was the best thing but other than that i feel like it was a little boring but what do you guys think about the second third uh let's go hockey first year what was your feeling about that second third so we got the keys Ackerson seeing dead bodies in front of them and, and then we got the quan I, I know you already kind of talked about the quan yeah. what was your what was your what was your would you would have picked the dumbest aspect of that scene what do you think the dumbest thing that you thought? Because in my opinion, is, is just so stupid. Of, of, uh, of the, um, the the escape plan, scene? our escape, our escape. What's our yeah, plan? Yeah, I mean, escape? all right. So here, here's what I here's what I would say. So that little kid was wearing Master Chief's helmet. Soren, 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 Soren's helmet. He was wearing his father's helmet. I, one, I can't believe he even walked five steps with that thing on. But I was so <laughs> happy that. I don't know if it was Quan or the mom was like, hey, do you mind taking that off? Because I was going <laughs> to blow my top. Like that kid was just like, I'm going to walk with Soren Tullin. So like just that whole entire scene just in general was just terrible. Um, but the keys uh, and actors and scene, I thought it was good. You can just tell how much better the writing is in general from this season, uh, you know, from last. Uh, but I think, you know, Cobalt Team, if we were to have some action this episode, it should have probably been watching Cobalt Team get clapped. I think, 100%. Yeah, I think that would have been perfect. Give me a five minute scene. Like, well, eliminate one of the Quan scenes. You had two or three. Eliminate one of those dog water scenes and give me Cobalt, like a badass Cobalt scene, and then just get getting clapped up. You, you could, and let's go. I won't let you jump into here because I know you have a lot of stuff to say about that part. 100 Hockey is a million percent right. This was the moment for the action scene I mentioned in the previous segment. What happened to Cobalt Team? And this is where you can again put in the covenant in this episode. The, the major sin of season one, besides Master Chief looking like a complete moron with some of these other characters, is that the covenant was overshadowed by this stupidity throughout the season. This was a moment that they could have inserted the Covenant without having a mass attack like they did in the first two episodes at times. This was that perfect moment. And you could have again shown the Spartans, uh, uh, Spartan choose what they're capable of and what the Covenant is capable of to take them down. And that would have been a huge pivotal moment. I think would have been such a, uh, a great one for this episode to really shoot it. Um, and build up that tension that this covenant is here. We've seen signs of it with the class thing in the beginning, you know, at the end of the episode uh, two. But again, seeing how and what we're going to talk about at the end, this elite leading the charge to reach, introducing him at this moment on how much of a badass I think would have been a huge moment. Yeah, and so when we jump into the final third, in my opinion, is probably the best aspects. And there are some pretty good scenes and also some ones that I wish they didn't have, but. Let's start with the chief and ad, the admiral. I forgot her name, but basically he thought, "Hey, if I can," because he what basically happens, he's now court martialed, not court martialed, but he's he's grounded. And I thought to myself, you're, "You're telling me you don't have more guards around your best soldier on the planet? Like, you know, you have two guards that just walk with him, no gun. I think they have guns, but they're like not even holstered. They're just like on their backs, like, hey, you know, it's just protocol, chief. We're not trying to be a douche." And he just one punch man knocks both of them out. 
instantly and like, all right, well, this is just remind me of Captain America scene. But at least even yeah. that, like, I they like always gave him a struggle. Two. There was like yeah. six guys <laughs> holding him. Yeah, like guys. There was like two guys there, and he just like just whap at slap both of them, <laughs> and they both fell over. And you're like, dude, come on, like this is the best. You know, get get paid like two more other uh, actors to stand there, pretend to fight him or whatever. But that was stupid. But then the Admiral thing, I thought was like it was a little bit of a, a side. I was thinking to myself like. I don't remember this admiral getting cla- like get completely fired, like for what happened with season one. Because I know that she is an actual act uh, character from the lore, um, but I was like, yeah, I, I was like, I thought to myself, I was like, this is a way she was actually like fired. Like I thought she was still part of this whole thing, and and I was right in the long run, she was part of Oni, and that she keeps called it O and I, and I was like, stop calling it O and I. Why is it that Pablo Shriver, who probably has never played a game in his life? can call it Oni, but you can't call it Oni. It makes no sense to me. So just keep calling Oni for the love of everything. But then we jump to probably one of the best scenes other than the probably the final one, which is the accuracy with Halsey scene. And we get a lot of character development here. I mean, because we already know that he hates her, but he kind of starts ragging on like, hey, you know, you built the you built Spartan 2s and they're vulnerable. Like they only listen to you because you broke them and you rebuilt them the way you want them to be but they suffered and already died through augmentation and they're broken now, right? And he said, like, my, like, they, they will be the foundation for the perfection of what you want. Just to give you, like, a heads up. Kind of like saying, like, you didn't make perfection, I'm going to make perfection. Kind of foreshadowing the Spartan freeze that he will, he basically does start as, you know, as the head of, a head, a member of Oni. Um, and I feel like that's going to be a really interesting scene, but going forward, but one of the best parts is that you kind of understand, you know, the whole clone thing that he keeps that she keeps going into a room and dying. Basically, we find out that his sister was taken as a hostage, uh, well, taken as a Spartan and entered the Spartan 2 program, and she died due to augmentation. And she basically says to him, hey, you know, I just want to let you know, you know, she she li- she did love you, and she, you know, she died for the better cause, and uh, maybe that'll make you feel better that she did love you, and she did care about you guys and everything, and it was a pretty brutal, like, you're like, damn, that's screwed up. And he, you could tell even the, like, the actor, like, you know, the actor, and like, you know, it, it hit him. And you now understand everything why, why the Halsey stuff is happening. Why there's, because the, the clone that brings him in every single day is his sister. And he wants to do it to try to, like, throw shade at her. Because basically, just like the clones that she uses to replace the Spartan, the kids that they take at the Spartan program that die very soon after they are taken abducted, is the same clones that he keeps bringing into her room that die very short after to give her like constant like this is what you did yeah. this is what you did every single day like literally just to get under her skin um but then he just brings in soren like i think you guys got some, some talking to do just give you <laughs> a peace out homie and then leaves out of the room and i was like that's pretty shady like that's it was good back and forth between the two yeah. of them because she was doing it i know she was like oh wow it's nice for her. But she was doing it to kind of like, you know, she did love you. you know, she did die for a better purpose. And he was just like, oh, like yeah. Two evil, two evil people going like, on. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, guess what? Here's Soren to come talk, talk to you about that. Um, who was part of the augmentation that happened. Who he got scarred from it. Um, so it was kind of like that that interesting scene that they threw in there. Um, but I, I want to talk lastly about the, the Quan Rambo. You know, I think... Quan Rambo Let's is going to be a next. The next show is going to be about Quan, Quan Rambo. Rambo. Um, basically, while Soren's wife is taken hostage, the pirates, pirates like for me, are trying to interrogate her about some magical treasure that that they have. You know that she does. There's no treasure. All that BS, whatever. And all of a sudden, you know, they hear ringing, and you would think, you know, there's something tapping. going on. Your metal tapping going on. Metal tap. You think something? You would be like, all right. Well, you sent one guard. He's gone. He hasn't come back yet. You would think that maybe multiple people would go and like, let's well, go they find out. Yeah, they say, all right, you go by yourself. No gun, right? Second guy, all right, you can bring a knife with you, but go over there by yourself. Then the, <laughs> they're like, go find out what that sound is over there with the gun. And every single time, she just keeps killing him with like the smallest, bluntest knife I think of it. It looked like a butter knife that she was killing him with. And she, Quan assassinates everybody. And then frees the Soren's wife. And what's hilarious about that entire scene was the last psycho chick who looked like a wrestler who has a shotgun who watched probably everyone get killed 
somehow, some way, does not react and then shoots Quan, but she stabs her like in like, an instant. It was like the easiest stabbing I think I've ever seen. I, no assassinations yet stabbed behind. She stabbed her from the front. It didn't even matter. Like it didn't. It like it was an NPC type of move, and it was just dumb to me. Like I felt like the other two scenes were great, and then that scene just like just like ugh, like you, why, why do this? Thing? And I kind of want to get your quick reactions because I want to talk about the ending because the ending is like the best parts, um, with Ackerson's dad and then the final scene, which some good and some bad. So, um, what are you guys' opinions about that? That like the that trio you had the obviously the Ackerson Halsey, uh, the you know the Quan Quan Rambo. And, uh, you know, what do you guys feel about that stuff going into the final sections? Hockey, I'll let you go first. Yeah, so I thought the the Quan Rambo was obviously ridiculous. Uh, she just turned into a cold blood murderer, <laughs> uh, murdered, you know, three or four people. That would She's be- got bodies this show, man. She's got yeah, bodies. She's, She's more bodies, bodies than Spartans, that would, man. That would never, ever, ever really happen. So mm-hmm. they're just. They're just Vandic hasn't even shot his too. gun yet, I think. I, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Vandic got for, uh, still has a safety on. But she's yeah. murdering people left and right. And yeah, she's hand-to-hand combat. She's just absolutely amazing with it. So, you know, unfortunately, everything with Quan is, is probably just not going to be good at all. Um, but the Ackerson uh, Halsey thing, last year Halsey was probably one of my favorite characters. Uh, I think she was the one that was actually written correctly or written uh, at least in good faith. Um, and like I said, Ackerson right now is is at the top of the leaderboard. So any scenes with them, um, they kind of work off of each other very well. Uh, so I thought that scene was very good, brought out a lot of emotion. And yeah, you can kind of see the back and forth uh, kind of like Langelico said, of two evil people kind of throwing shade at each other, which is pretty cool. But again, they're they're evil for like good reasons or they're trying to be to like save humanity. So they have to yeah. do some evil stuff. But um, yeah, see, finding out that, you know, Allison, I'm pretty sure her name was Allison, was the sister of Ackerson. Uh, uh, Julia, Julia. Uh, Julia, excuse me. Yeah, Julia was the sister of Ackerson. Uh, was a pretty cool surprise and kind of like punched you right in the balls, really, uh, for the last two episodes, seeing what was going on with Halsey uh, and Julia. So I thought that was a pretty cool scene. It makes it makes Ackerson make so much more sense to what he yeah. was doing. Because yeah. you're exactly. like, I guess he's just being a dick. And you're like, well, no, it actually has reason why he's doing this. And Langelica, what do you feel about uh, these these best yeah I'll, I'll make it short action halsey uh one of the best scenes of the episode um great uh, repertoire and giving more you know backstory to their relationship um and then we get to rambo quan rambo uh, um and the fact is you know i was okay with the first two guys because it made sense you know she does it one at a time in a surprising fashion um but to get the guy from behind after the shotgun lady just vanished out of thin air and then for her to show up at the end and no bullet has been fired nothing and this was soren's crew apparently his crew sucks uh, so i mean maybe there is no trust <laughs> yeah, maybe they didn't deserve to get paid maybe, yeah. was, maybe he, they, they suck so did, bad that soren's like you guys don't deserve suck. to get paid you and just... that she has just been killing folks killing folks and this is a um a girl who got whipped up by the illusion uh, master chief in season one um so you know this is it's just like they're trying to make her so much more likable and such a badass they got a lot of work <laughs> they got a lot of work to do maybe she was actually smoking those mushrooms that she was talking about in the first episode in the first yeah. season maybe that's what they she it was on those things and that's what she made her like go wait go ape a wild you know what i mean like but let's talk about the final part because i feel like this is the best part of the episode first of all i've talked about the Ackerson scene with his dad it, it was kind of that like full culmination the dad kind of felt like you only met him in this one episode, but like you got a full picture of with of the dad. And he I know he didn't have that many lines, but you got a full story arc with him and actress in this one episode. And it starts with him losing his memory and him saying, you know, don't let him take me alive. And, and now it starts with the last part. Is it time? It's time. Right. And they know he knows exactly what happens. And and what he does at the end, just like give his dad some happiness before he dies is he brings in the clone julia right to like be with him one more time before he dies and it was like it was messed up because you know like uh, yeah you could tell like even the actor that does actor the actress does a great job i mean he brings that emotion without him yeah. showing it it's just without yelling and screaming the quick yeah. the yeah, quick exactly. the quick small amount of lines he says the subtleness in the way he's saying it like it's just you could tell like pain like it's just painful and now he's he knows that he needs to leave right and 
and that's and that's basically his exit now granted i know we're still going to see him a little bit more in the, the next episodes but i feel like this is like on the last few scenes we're going to see of actress and until like the end of the show maybe they might show some scenes with him like away from reach but you know like you know this is kind of a good way to give him like that that continuation arc that we'll see later on um but then we get to the final scene with chief and perez and now granted i don't think perez is a great character but what this in the whole like religion you know connected whatever but perez confirms to what everyone already knew that chief is not crazy he saw maki we saw maki and she now agrees oh yeah the woman? Wish we, oh, we wish we didn't yeah the, the woman oh, with the black <laughs> the woman with the black cloak like that that chick yeah yeah i saw her too like why, why didn't you say something the whole time would have been great <laughs> It still makes no sense why she didn't say anything, but like if you just said yes, I saw a woman, like then everyone would believe me. And he's just like, oh yeah, so you did see her. But well, the most important aspect was that she's just like how Kiza's daughter was written in the first season. She's a communications expert, so she actually understands the Saint Healy language. Um, and when she heard the the echo or the translation, she was she had it on memory. She had it on record. And when Chief is hearing it, she's translating it and at the same time. And this is probably the best scene of the entire show, in my opinion. Because now it reminds me of in the Game of Thrones before one of the final battles of the show, they have a very intense scene that shows everyone's life at this point and what's happening. But while the quotes are being read in the background, is Lily, it's a prayer that he is that they're all reciting. And this badass elite is basically saying that I will use the demon's head and the blood will guide us to the Holy Ring and light the fire of the great journey will begin. And then you already know, like, yeah, I, I am I, dead. And, and like in his name, is like, dead. I declare my name is Val Gattari, right? Or Martini or whatever how you want to call it. He is Gal, my name is Val Gattari and I am death, right? And it's like, I was like, that was one of the baddest Hell lines yeah. that you could say as an yeah. elite. And yeah. now, now granted, my hope is that this was that either the 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 this is my only hope is that this is supposed to be Val Val Vadam, the the Arbiter character from the original Halo game that they're trying to like granted they'll create their own version. They do that all the time, fine. But do not make this character like a one off villain like they did with like Atriox in the last season. Where they remember they like Oh God! Oh, Atriox. Atriox. oh man. Yeah, Atriox. <laughs> Wait a minute! They're <laughs> connecting. They're connecting Atriox as a general, and then he and gets then a plane comes by in. The <laughs> Like you're like, dude, like you have an ability to make this better than what you could imagine. I said this in the beginning, last last episode we covered that Vel Vadam is the original Arbiter. He was the commander of the Reach military when invading Reach and Halo One. Right, and he basically was like he was a top general. He was a guy that everyone respected, and then he fails in Halo One, and that's why he gets branded as a her as a heretic, branded as a failure, and that's why he has to be the arbiter to save himself. Like that is why that character is written so well. So if you do this well, and you take this character, you pump him up, you make him a badass, you can really set up the next, even the next season, with this guy being the main antagonist follow the storyline of the game and I can guarantee you fans will love it. They will adore it. Do not make Maki the Arbiter. Make this guy the dude. Make him the guy. I don't that, know Arbiter. We're not ready for an Arbiter. We're ready for yeah, a general. I'm just saying make we're him. We're ready for a Covenant General. Make him the guy that we have to be like, this guy's a badass. We're going to we're gonna see him become a badass. Like We want to see more of this. But I want to get your opinions about the ending, guys, before we close out. Uh, Haki, I'll let you go first. What was your feeling about this ending? Yeah, so, um, look, I, I think the, the stuff in the church, you know, the, the whole religion thing, I get it, the prayer and everything. Um, I thought that was pretty good. Um, I think, like you said, I think they're kind of going towards what the actual story, uh, what the video game story um, is portraying. So I think they're actually beginning to write what the fans want because they kind of saw uh you know what happened in, in the first season and i think they're kind of moving towards um what the halo show should be so i'm i'm hoping that um god i i'm hoping that maki is not the arbor there's no way that she's going to be the arbor it's got to be an elite um 
I'm very excited to see what that kind of turns into. Uh, but the Ackerson and his father scene I thought was pretty cool as well. Um, it was a little sad, but I thought him bringing in uh, his daughter in the end and them kind of passing away together was kind of a very, I don't know, I don't want to say nice gesture, but it was something to give to his father, like like his, his father's almost like last wishes to, to see his daughter. So I thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, it's this was a big build up episode. So um, the end is really uh, the actual end when that I'm pretty sure a bomb went off when they were sitting in the church. So that bomb. Uh, maybe you guys know a little bit more than, than I do, but I think that's going to be setting up for obviously the yeah the invasion the attack man. right away. So next yeah. episode should be pretty, pretty uh, you know popping right away. Yeah, Angelica, what's your feeling about this last part? Yeah, I mean the big thing about Covenant is religion, um, and and so that was kind of the tying that together in the church thing, and then she just mentioned that it's a prayer that he's he's uh this elite is saying out and i thought it was great adding in those scenes with the different spartans and the different people um and and the elite kind of just talking on he's like gonna be the tool of their salvation like of, of their the weapon of their salvation yeah right. the weapon of their salvation it was such a badass um way to to do it i love how they had the elite speaking even though it's different like we couldn't understand and her translating it um to me i thought that was really good and this is a huge moment to me in this show going to the next one this cannot be like a guy they just whack off in episode four um you know to to show how badass the spartans are this is an opportunity for us to introduce covenant characters and something that i have wanted in the show from the get-go and that you know, not being the random prophets of truth you see, and the, and and Maki. That that's not what I'm looking for. I want the prophets, but I, I want to know about more of these elite generals. And this could be a big moment that really turns the show for us. I, I agree with you guys completely. And my hope, and I'll give uh, my my hopes and dreams for next episode. You wanted to appease the Marsman crew. You want to appease fans. Start the next episode with uh, was it Var Gartari. Flashback, yeah, flashback to fighting the, Cobalt. the Cobalt team. Yep. You start the next episode with that to kind of bring people back in. Oh, like, hey, this guy's, a, this guy's a badass. And this is like what happens with the Covenant entering into like how they got past everybody. Like that would be perfect because then you you show us that he's a badass and you show us how the Covenant got past everyone, right? And then you jump to the scene where hell breaks oh. loose, right? Yeah, that that would make this the, the next episode clearly the start of something great yeah. but yeah. the idea is can we because now everything's converging on reach we have even quanar is going to reach in some way now i said this on jail kill off screen i'm gonna say it again i hear for everyone here what unfortunate thing is that we're gonna get is quan soren quan's uh, soren's wife and kessler are going to be replacing noble team as the the team that gets halsey off of reach and gets Cortana off of reach is not going to be the badass double team that we got the whole game on. Where everyone gets clapped. Everyone dies at the end. Sorry, spoiler alert. But we're going to get Quan's team to do it. Quan Bad Rambo idea, squad. Okay. Quan That's Rambo gross. 4 is going to be this, the team that gets Halsey off this off this planet. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. Hell yeah, man. That's what I want to hear. Uh, but. Any last words before we jump to the uh, to the end here, guys? Hey, man, maybe we're hyping ourselves up to get super disappointed, but this was the first time all show, all show, that's two seasons, that I was like, I'm excited for next Thursday. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna what I was going to say. This is like, if if it doesn't, if it doesn't have the same amount of action as either the first episode of the first season, or the uh, I think this is going to be their big season, shoot the CGI out. Yeah, this yeah, is, this is going to be the CGI blast right here. They're saving money. This is the money yeah. that they save. This yeah. is <laughs> yeah. without a doubt. I, yeah. d I guarantee it. Knowing they're knowing the way they work, was it eight episodes or seven yep, episodes? It was the mid season right here. It's going to be the first, big first mid and end. Those are that's how they always are. That's how they organize it. So this is the midway. It's going to go all out CGI, just like how they did the first season, but. With that being said, what was something that you liked about the episode or something you didn't like? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, hit a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.